afternoon. It's Mel Bundock here. Um, it's three o'clock in the afternoon in the UK. And I'm joined <laughs> by my gorgeous friend, Janelle Copeland. And it's a little bit earlier. Thank you so much for joining me so early. Janelle, I think it's 7 a.m., isn't it? In it is, California. yeah. <laughs> I got up at 5.30 a.m. for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> my here. pleasure. Um, it's a tricky one to navigate. Um, but anyway, I'm so glad you're here. So Janelle Copeland is also known as the Cake Mama on social media. Mm. And let me just kind of go through her bio with you very quickly. Um, Janelle has um, a really extensive background in leadership management with a focus on innovation and brand development. She's been featured on the Food Network four times and has another few shows waiting to air. Can't wait to talk about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. Janelle leads a team of 13 staff members in her bakery in California and also teaches business owners from around the world how to discover their secret recipes for success through an eight-week intensive masterclass called Passion to Profit. She believes that ident identifying your own personal niche or niche, <laughs> and mm -hmm. then creating items and experiences specifically for that clientele are the only things that can ensure growth in a highly competitive industry. Janelle's most important role is being a mother to her three teenage daughters. And you can follow her business on Facebook and Instagram at The Cake Mamas and Janelle at Janelle Copeland. And we'll post up the link in this while to um, where you can find out all about the Passion to Profit program that Janelle awesome. does. So thank you so much for joining me. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. So Janelle, um, let's go back in time a bit. Um, how did this kind of all start, the transition from Janelle in the old world to Janelle the Cake Mama? Um, well, first of all, let me time out real quick. I have to give you a quick shout out and tell you I'm really proud of you. I know that we spoke uh, sometime last year between November and December about wanting to start a show and do your own thing on Facebook. And so I want to give you some kudos and tell you that I'm really proud of you for doing it. And although this is episode three, I'm really honored to be here and I'm just cheering you on. So this is awesome. Thank you. And I just, we, just before Janelle and I went live on air, we were talking about how, you know, we're both busy mums. It's half term here for me in the UK. I've got kids kind of milling around the house. Um, so, and, and Janelle has too. Yeah. So if you hear noises in the background, it's just It's our time. kids. Yeah. Oh, well. And if you don't like it, there's other channels to watch, <laughs> I guess, that are more polished. <laughs> and I was tempted to think, should I kind of postpone this week's episode? But I thought, no. Um, this is consistency. We're showing up, and this is just who knows. Live TV, anything can happen. Yes. I've got two dogs in the house as well, so anything could happen. Right. So, My kids um, normally would be gone for school, but it's the last week of school, and the schedule's like completely whacked. So they're here, and they're loud, um, getting readier in the morning -ers, So they're going to be loud, I'm sure. So I apologize in advance. <laughs> apologize so yeah so, yeah. so let's see yeah so um what happened was uh my adult life you know i had a corporate career and i was able to work for really large uh retailers and just learn so much about marketing and sales and uh sops and leadership and uh hiring and recruiting and firing and just a lot of great things that have helped me shape who I am today. And then in 2009, um, my husband and I were both working for the same corporation. It went out of business and we were stuck with three small children. Um, they were four, six and eight at the time. Now we had all of our eggs in one basket. So now we had no income and um, we almost lost our home. We filed bankruptcy, we lost a car. Like we just thought that everything was changing and ending and it was a tough time for us. And um, so I just decided, okay, well maybe this is like God or the universe's way of saying, hey, you're doing something that needs to be redirected. Can you hear Can you me hear okay? Me? Yeah, it just went loud, but that's great. Better than quiet. Carry on. <laughs> I can like hear myself though. So, okay. Um, so anyways, I just decided at that point that being a corporate working mom, you know, forced me to miss out on a lot of things that I wanted to enjoy with my kids. So I looked at it as an opportunity to kind of redirect. I decided to stay home with them for a little while and start to volunteer at their school. Um, I'm not the kind of person to like stay still and just, you know, be cool with 
oh, now I don't have to work. So I enrolled back in college and I just, you know, started doing things that I couldn't do when I was working. So um, one of those things included having the TV on while I was making dinner and there happened to be a show on. It was called The Cake Boss. I don't know if you're familiar. Um, it was a really popular show that started in 2009. And it was just some guy making cakes and they were over the top show stopping, you know, masterpieces. Mm -hmm. And I had always been really creative and I had always made like my kids Halloween costumes. And although I was a baker, I didn't, you know, make cakes like that. So um, the next day I was inspired. I went out, bought a bunch of stuff, started making cakes and kind of the rest is history from there. It turns out I was really good at it. Um, within maybe 10 months, I had opened my first retail bakery and it's just grown and grown and all the opportunities um, that we've been blessed to have have just kind of come. I believe they've come because of the actions that I've just kind of started taking. Um, and so that's one thing I, I really am big on. Like, you know, we hear all the time action creates clarity. I think when you're in your worst times and you don't know what the heck to do, I think you just need to do something and then somehow you know, things will, doors will open for you, opportunities that you didn't even know existed. I never intended to be in the food industry or to be the cake mama or to, you know, have been on Food Network so many times. And those are all just blessings, I think, because I just got in action. Mm. So I was, that was actually going to be one of my questions. Mm -hmm. Good, one of my questions. Baking and cakes. And baking cakes. Can you hear me? Am I echoey to everyone else? Yeah. No? Okay. It's stopped now for me. Is that okay? yeah mm -hmm. okay um so yeah baking that was all kind of it wasn't something that you were passionate about when you were younger it was something you were kind of watching this and I, i'm kind of the same i love watching these um cookery things and love it watching these cake things um but what made you think do you know what i could do that uh oh, you know i think <laughs> I think if you talk to any of my friends or my family, they'll tell you that I did that with everything. Like at one point, do you remember like in the 2000, early 2000s, like rhinestone belt buckles were a big deal. And I was like, I can make that. I'm not gonna spend $150 on one of those. I'll go get my own rhinestones and I'll make them even better. Um, I mean, I'd have friends that were getting married or you know, doing it really fancy things. And this was before Pinterest. And I would be like, I can make that. And so I've always been really creative and really willing to kind of step up for a challenge, I guess. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, the cakes, I was like, I don't know. I, I had never worked with fondant and any of the things that he was using, but I just thought, well, I'm sure at some point he started somewhere too. So I don't know if that's auda audacity or if you're just crazy. And I just go, well, I think I can do that. So yeah. I think you've had a little of that too, right? I think I can do that. I'm going to start a show. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and totally kind of, the, I don't actually know what I'm doing, but I just plug it in. And you know what? The if thing is, who cares if you don't though? Like, I mean, what if you do? What if it turns out you do? And I think that's something really important. There's something important to be like said about failing. Like we're so worried to start things because what if you can't do it? Like what if I couldn't make cakes? Oh, well, it's not a big deal. No one was relying on me, depending on me. It wasn't like it was like going to be some life-changing thing. I just decided to say, I think I can do that. And it turns out I could. And so mm -hmm. if we don't try the things that we may or may not be able to do, how would you ever know what you're capable of? Totally. So tell us about the first stint on the, was it the Cake Boss you went or was it the Cake Wars? Um, the first thing I ever did on Food Network was Cupcake Wars. And that in the United States is one of the like most popular shows ever on history in Food Network. Mm -hmm. And um, I went on, it was extremely stressful, really crazy. And, you know, it's worse than what you see on TV. Like people watch it and they're stressed out and it's intense. And it's like 10 times worse if you are the actual contestant. <laughs> and so what I tell people often about any of the TV experiences I've been on, any of the challenges is this, there is a team of like 100 people and their only job on set is to create an amazing show that will keep the viewers on edge. 
They could care mm -hmm. less who wins. They don't care about the cakes that you make or, you know, what the flavors of your cupcakes are. They don't care if you go home, if you lose, if you win. They just want to make a really great show. For you as a competitor, you care about winning. And so when you have two different, mm -hmm. totally different mindsets, it just, you know, it's like, okay, well, I got to just get in like go mode and I really got to be out for myself because I just mm -hmm. want to win. My reputation's on the line. For them, they want to see you drop a cake. They want to see you completely fail. And so yeah. just knowing that, like they're not out to get you. They just want to make a really great show. The more you can mess up, the better it is for TV. <laughs> kind of just allows you to give yourself some grace and just say, well, hey, I did the best I could. Hmm. But it turns and out I won. And that's because you went on to win, didn't you? I did win. And then um, that was a huge victory. I mean, it helped my business a lot. It brought a lot of people in. It was basically like a free $4 million commercial, which I couldn't have asked for anything better for my small little business. And then um, remember, we had lost our jobs. We were in a really tough financial situation when I got into all this. So what really I was down on myself for was my whole life, my whole adult life, I was really um, serious about my credit, serious about how I spent my money, serious about how I manage things. And then just like that, you know, you lose your job and you have no money, no credit, no nothing. And so the one time in my life that I really needed to take a loan out because I had good credit, I didn't have good credit. Mm -hmm. So what that did was that taught me how to be a minimalist that taught me how to be really scrappy and scrape all my pennies together and really just save. And I think that that's really what's helped us get through, you know, eight years now. Well, it's going to be nine in October. So mm -hmm. I think that's awesome. Anyways, when we went back on to the show, it was then for uh, Cake Wars. So there was Cupcake Wars, then there's Cake Wars. The big cake cakes wars, now. <laughs> yeah. And Cake Wars, honestly, is what my business was. Like, I never intended to <clears throat> start a cupcake bi business. That's just something that kind of evolved. The customers were like, hey, you make these really amazing $500 cakes, but what do I get on a Tuesday, like after school or, you know, a special treat? So we um, started selling cupcakes. So that's, you know, we went on to do Cupcake Wars and then we really had to sell cupcakes. Mm -hmm. Now, a few year years later, when cakes were a big deal and they had a cake show, that was really like my jam because I love the artistry. I love being able to make amazing things. So we went on there, we won that. And then they asked us to come back. And then we went on and we lost that. Mm -hmm. And then we went on and we won that one. And then I lost another one. So it's kind of just like, you know, again, go have fun. What's the experience? It's a great commercial for your business. Amazing publicity. It is. And mm. so, um, so yeah, it's been a fun ride. And recently they reached out to us because they're filming a pilot for another show, which I can't really talk about that. But I'll tell you, um, they originally said you can come on and compete with two people, yourself and two people. And, you know, we would advise you to bring someone who is strong in sales. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm good in sales. And my husband's fantastic at sales. So I'll bring my husband and my lead baker. Well, mm. at the very last minute, they said, well, we really like Eddie, my husband, and your personality and your dynamic together. And we've changed the show. So now there are only two people, two contestants. And so they cut my head baker out, which was crazy because Eddie doesn't even make cakes like he's not he has a job and so now I have to compete in this show with him and um I can't tell you what happened but when that it's getting so ready for funny. air you know I will just tell you you Mel will die laughing at the whole entire episode I cannot, I cannot wait to wait. see it because yeah. I've met Eddie, I've met Eddie. <laughs> he's crazy so you got the cake mama and the cake papa now correct yeah so is he kind of like, he's kind of like, what's he make of all of this? Well, you know, I left out a really important part and I don't even know if I've ever shared it with you, but so my oldest daughters, um, Jasmine and Kayla, they are technically my stepdaughters, but I've been in their life forever. When I started the Cake Mamas, um, I had this random dream about their mom. You have told me this. Okay. Yeah. And when yeah, I started sure. the business. I started the business basically off of a dream that I had with, 
you know, myself owning a bakery and Eddie's ex, the mother <laughs> of my kids. And he was like, wait, what? Well, did you know, by the way, that she used to be a baker? Did you know that she, you know, does this? And I was like, no, I didn't. Long story short, it turns into this series of conversations. Her and I wind up chatting about owning, you know, the possibilities of owning a bakery together. The kids at four, six, and eight overheard this. And they said, okay, so we're thinking if you're both our mamas and you're both going to make cakes together, you should be called the cake mamas. And that's how our business started. Mm -hmm. And so we started this business, unconventional, unlikely duo. Um, and we realized that we were just really different. You know, there was the corporate background in me wanted to really follow SOPs and drive the business. And I think that's just not really what she wanted to do. She was involved in, you know, the baking side and the art side. And so we went our separate ways after a couple of years in business. And now we just really focus on raising the kids together. So mm. I don't even know why I told you that. Oh, that you said, what does he make of all this? Well, yes. you know, imagine if he can survive that his wife wanting to go into business with his ex. And what's funny is everyone always says, well, what did he say? Did he say not to do it? Did he? Say no, he didn't. He was like. I can't imagine okay, this that. is happening. But if but you've got an idea, you've got in, your an idea head, in your head, Eddie would Eddie stand would stand stand stand. Stand. No. <laughs> he's he's probably my soulmate because he's the most supportive husband and he really does. And then, you know, back to like business by design, we which is where we met in November. Mm -hmm. I told him, I said, you know what? We knew that I wanted to start consulting. We knew that I wanted to start teaching. And I kept telling him about like online courses and the opportunity to be like an online instructor, teacher, mentor, whatever. And he was like, okay, well, you know, whatever. Well, then I dragged him to that event and literally he was like, what is happening? What are these people talking about? What is this language they're speaking? What's a Kajabi? You know, like he had no clue. And I go, just go with it. Like, these are the people we need to know and learn and love and, you know, connect with. And then, I don't know, twelve, thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000 later, you know, he let us join the mastermind and he just kind of comes along for the ride. And he, what a great benefit for him though, because he gets to kind of learn all the stuff I drag him along for. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. I, love I love seeing, seeing people do this thing together. together. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> so um you now and, and the conversations that we've had in the past with um your program and um the academy that you have for your students is about teaching kind of people you know who do you know have that idea that I want to make cupcakes that actually do you know what you can make cupcakes and you can make a living doing so not just yeah. cupcakes but any kind of home craft based industry Yep. So I'll tell you, it's really interesting because now that I'm connected to women like you and all the people in our mastermind, I would say we're above average on like the tech scale, even though that may not be our strong suit. I would say we're above average on the personal growth and development scale. I would say we're resourceful and we want to go out and find the information. And we're business owners that want to make a living and generate income and be compensated fairly for our time, right? Absolutely. In the cake industry, it's a little bit challenging because here's the cycle of how you wind up like me. <clears throat> Generally, and remember, I've got like nine years into this, so I know what kind of the industry is but doing. But 10 years ago, you didn't have this technology. No. You probably didn't even know what an online business was. No. So anyone who says right now, oh, but I don't know how to get started. We started like that. Right. I didn't have a bloody we had no resource. what Tim Page was. You know, what? Yeah. It's, it's, you, you know, it's something to learn. So by saying, I don't know, I don't understand. Well, I'm sorry. Go out there and you go and learn. <laughs> Yeah. And so what happens now, though, is that most women, let's say, because I, I use women because we're predominantly the baking industry is predominantly women. I would love for that to change because, you know, what they say about women, they say we're catty. They say we don't know how to act. You know, they say that we're bitchy. Can I say that word? I don't know. Yes, you can. And uh, what I have seen is that generally speaking, you become a cake decorator or a cupcake maker because you'll come into a bakery like mine where I know how to factor in my costs, my labor, my overhead. And then I arrive at a you know certain amount, uh, like a price. 
And what happens is people come in for their kid's birthday and they're on a budget, which I totally get. And then they can't afford a three or $400 cake. So they say, I'm going to make it myself, which is great. So they'll go out, they'll buy a bunch of stuff, not realizing that now you spent $369 on all of the stuff you needed to make the actual cake. And I was a trained professional and we would have had something amazing for you. So what happens is, is one person at this event will tell them, hey, that's really good. You should do this for a living. You should start a business. And you know what they do? They go out, they get business cards printed and they're like, boom, I'm in business not having any business background or experience about how to identify your ideal client, where to actually find them, how to market to them, how to uh, create and write persuasive sales copy to get them to be attracted to you. And mm -hmm. so they don't know that these things even exist. So like you don't know really what to Google, you know, and it just becomes this long excruciating journey where now they've been making cakes and that they've had a cake business from home for like two years, but they're not making a single penny because they don't mm -hmm. understand what gross margin profit percentage is or, you know, how to factor in their labor. Or now they've convinced themselves because a lot of people, if you don't know how to convey value in your product, people will say that's expensive. And then mm -hmm. their feelings get hurt. And then they lower the price, even though they weren't making a penny to begin with. Yeah. And they just get bullied by these customers. And they're like, well, they justify it. Well, I love making cakes. And so it's just my passion. It's my gift to the world. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, your gift to the world is like also the laundry that's piling up and the spouse that you're neglecting and the kids that you're not spending time with because you're choosing to stop running your household to make someone's cake for 17 hours and not get paid a penny for it. That's not okay. mm -hmm. doing yourself a service. Like that's not improving your life. It may be making you a better cake decorator, but in my opinion, unless it's really truly like, Hey, I love making friendship bracelets and I make them for free for everyone. To me, I just feel like my time's valuable, you know, and I should be compensated accordingly. And if I'm putting in the work and I'm becoming the expert in something, and I want to share it with someone to help improve their life, then you should compensate me for that, you know? Totally. And whilst we're talking about cakes and cupcakes, um, really, this mindset could be applied to anyone starting out in business, you know, around pricing and valuing yourself and your time mm -hmm. and your services. Yes, you can kind of go in and um and I think most of us do. We go in with kind of like a relatively low price point because we think, well, I'm a, I'm a newbie. You know, I can't go in there with just these really high prices. But um, but then as time goes on and you become you know more business savvy and you invest in yourself and you learn your trade and your craft and your skill and you invest in kind of these masterminds and, um, you know, absolutely, you've got to kind of value your time, prime, you know, can we make more money, can't make more time, and yeah. you've got to value your time, but you've got to value your worth as well, totally. And I, I love everything you've just said about there. Um, so, um, and I love how you're teaching people to do this. Now, how are you actually convincing? Um, because here's what, one thing, getting them to even kind of raise the prices um, to begin with, but what about getting people just to um, see the value in investing in themselves? Yeah, so that's tough and tricky in my industry because, again, I don't think that these women necessarily like don't want to learn and grow and invest in themselves. I think it's a matter of, hey, I couldn't afford your cake when you were trying to sell it to me, which is why I started even making my own cakes. So they're mm. working with limited budgets. I understand that. And again, like this is why I share my story. We filed bankruptcy. We lost, almost lost our home. We lost a vehicle. We were in really a really tough time. At the same time, like you and I know that when you need change, like you are desperate for change, you're going to find a way. You just are. And mm. so um, I don't think that my course is supposed to be for everyone. It's not for everyone that wants to attract more customers. Like I'm not really teaching you that. What I'm teaching you is the mindset that you have to have to become a business owner that's going to be taken seriously. I'm mm. teaching you uh, the, tenacious, the ten tenacity and the audacity that's required 
to be able to have a long-standing business. I'm teaching you that bad things happen at all levels in your business. And so you may as well be surrounded in a community and have a mentor that's gonna support and cheer you on. And then, oh, by the way, yeah, I'm gonna teach you how to break down the gross margin profit percentage on your cake. But then before you freak out, I'm gonna show you how to attract those ideal clients and how to get them to wanna pay you for what your time and your your talent is worth. And so to me, it's not just a pricing course. There's lots of other teachers out there that will show you how to break down your pricing. And to be honest with you, I do that for free. Mm -hmm. I did a one hour live webinar and it's all over YouTube and people watch it like crazy. And guess what? The number one question they say or the statement they make after they watch it, no one would pay that. I mean, I don't know. Is that true? Because I've had a business now, a brick and mortar retail business for eight and a half years. And, you know, it, it seems to thrive. And I'm telling you, like, I wouldn't have stayed in business if I wasn't able to factor in a profit and be able to explain to customers why my prices are what they are. So I teach all that. Basically, it's all the processes that I've built for the last eight, nine years, I literally hand them over all those standard operating procedures and then I teach them how to implement them in their own businesses. Mm -hmm. But it is a huge, um, I don't know if they know, but for all you viewers out there, like I love Melanie Bundock and she's actually one of the guest speakers inside of my portal for my members. And anytime I have the opportunity to support you, I mean, you're about like, you know, just think and act and behave and the world and the universe will give it to you and there's an abundance out there and I'm like yeah these ladies need that so mm. and, and that's the thing I think oh thank you that's so kind of you to say and there are a lot of people do have limiting beliefs around that and, and of course there are some people who will never pay that but I think it takes a quite a unique kind of person to see beyond can I afford can't I afford something because for me the greater question is usually um my vision is so big that I it's just I can't afford to not invest right. in myself. I, I can't was afford say that. to the not take myself. Not, yeah, the cost of not investing in something that you know will grow you exponentially is much greater than whatever the monetary value is that you put on it. And mm. you know, I think being able to have some skin in the game when something really stings and you know that you really can't afford it, right? And you're just like, God, I really wish that I could invest in this. That's when you really need to do it. Like find a way, pull your resources together, because I guarantee that when you spend money you don't have, if you have what it takes to even be a successful business owner with the audacity and the tenacity, then you will show up differently. So if you invest in something you can't afford, guess what? You got to go out and make money now. Like you have to go out and show up differently tomorrow when you wake up because you know this debt is like lingering, lingering over you. Now mm -hmm. I'm not saying go out and buy a Louis Vuitton purse because tomorrow you can make more money. I'm mm -hmm. saying that it's okay to invest in things that will help you grow and expand your finances, your thinking, you know, your business savvy, those things if the course says, I'm going to help you double your business, but you don't have the money today, does it make sense to wait until you have the money? If you knew how to make more money, you would be doing that and you wouldn't need the course, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's true for anything you and I have invested in. I know that's been the case. And so if there was something I wanted bad enough, I would find a way to take out a loan, to borrow the money, to sacrifice in a way that would allow me to invest in the thing. And then the the step that people are missing is you got to show up differently, like every totally. day after that. So I'll give you an example. Business by design. It was right before Christmas, you know. It was. <laughs> My daughter wanted uh, club volleyball for Christmas. It was thirty five hundred dollars. And this mastermind that I knew that we needed to be a part of, my husband and I, in order to grow, in order to have these relationships, in order to be able to expand, um, I had to find a way. And so I did. But guess what? The moment we left that conference, on the way home, I was writing in my notebook. And 48 hours later, I was like, I got to do something. And I launched my course. Yeah. And guess I what? Remember. 
if I wouldn't have made that really uncomfortable decision to say, I don't have this money, but you know what? I am freaking capable of making it. I need this extra push. And I put myself in that bind. Guess what? I showed up differently. I learned I was capable. I learned that I could make it happen. I learned that I didn't need as much time as I thought I needed. And when your back's against the wall, you show up differently. So, And had you not, you would have kind of stayed in that little comfort zone for a bit longer and just had Christmas and, you know, nothing would have changed. Yeah. No, not at all. Yeah. So I can mm. say that for anyone that's thinking of investing in, you know, something that you're offering, anyone that's mm. thinking of investing in something I offer or Anything else that may be something that you're like, God, I really want to go to this conference, but I don't know if I can afford to take time off of work. What will it cost you to not go to that conference? Is it going to cost you another year of being stuck in a rut or being stagnant or not reaching your full potential? Because mm -hmm. I just think that like the universe, God, your destiny is waiting on you. And so yeah. if you don't figure out how to put those things in action quickly, then you just delay your destiny. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, a very similar thing happened for me that after investing in the same program, um, January was my best month ever. It's just like, because you kind of think, right, I've really got to- against the wall. Yeah, I've got to pay for this now. <laughs> yep. So totally, oh, so, so true, so true. So Jeanette, I want to talk a bit more about kind of big vision. Obviously, this is called Big Vision TV. Yes. I want to know what's next for you. Oh, I'm excited. It's like whoever I talk to, on the, okay, I say whoever. I've had three guests so far on this show. But for everyone who I've spoken guests to. Guests I've had. It will be, it will be. Um, but the people I've spoken to, everyone, they, to people watching, they feel like, well, these people have, you know, reached the pinnacle, Casper in episode one, he sailed around the world with his family. Ren, last year she published her cookbook. You know, it's kind of like, well, these people have reached the pinnacle, what's next to them? But the interesting thing is that for both Casper and Ren, they both said they feel it's just the beginning. Yep. So I'll tell you, it's really funny because although we can get on and have this great discussion about growth, that doesn't mean we're excluded from challenges and self-doubt and all of that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, we got a call about a month ago from this. It's an opportunity for me to expand my business. And mm. um, it's to the tune of like a lot of money. <laughs> and it's just one of those things where you go, you know what? Yeah, we're going to go all in. What's the worst that could happen? Like it all crumbles. Mm, well, we got to make some sort of risk and let's just do it. Well, so I just kind of left it to prayer, to God, whatever. And I said, okay, just kind of guide me. Like if this unfolds naturally, then I'm going to lean into it, you know, and if it's hard and if it's um, something that just doesn't feel right, then I'm not going to be tied to it. So we're in the middle of this. Mind you, I leave in, I leave on Friday. Like it is when, no, what is it? It's Wednesday. Wednesday. So I leave in 48 hours to go to Thailand for two weeks, basically. What? Cause it's going to be my birthday. Tomorrow's my birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Thank you. I hope you're making your own cake. No. <laughs> and honestly, all of a sudden last night, everything was happening. Like they were like, we need, you know, um, X amount of money. We need your equipment list. Not only do we need to know your equipment, but we need the make and model. Well, I haven't had a chance to shop for all that stuff. And it got really hard, right? Like all last night. And I was like, I can't pull this off in 48 hours. And so I've been having this struggle all night long. Can I have, can I pull this off? Do I want to, does this feel right? And you're constantly just kind of weighing all these conversations, right? And so I feel like, although it's an amazing opportunity, I don't know what the next 24 hours are gonna bring. So I'm on the brink of doing something so big but also the, taking the biggest risk I've ever taken in my business, which could jeopardize everything. Um, I, I'm also waiting to see, do I get approved for the finances I need to make this happen? So that's another thing. Like they want me to sign a lease and sign all these contracts, but I'm waiting on like the bank. I'm waiting for answers. So if that doesn't come, then I have to pass up on this opportunity. So what I keep reminding myself is, Okay, this is your big vision. This is what you want to do. I heard this amazing thing. You know who Kerry Washington is? She's the star of Scandal. Yep, yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. So I um, every year I go to this Oprah event. It's called Super Soul Sessions. It's amazing. 
And this year they didn't do it, so I was pretty pissed. But they did in New York. I couldn't go. So Kerry Washington, a couple years ago with Oprah, she's doing this interview. And Oprah says, you know, talk to me about your relationship with God. I feel, or she said, I understand that he answers your prayers in certain ways. And she said, oh, yeah. Like she, it was like you and I talking. She said, yeah. When I ask God for something, he gives me one of three answers. He says, yes, sure, you can have that. Or he says, um, well, God, I'm going to mess it up. He says, sure, you can, but not right now. Mm -hmm. Or he says, no, because I have something better for you. Love that. And to me, that was just life changing. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, oh, so if you, mm -hmm. yeah, me too. If mm -hmm. you deny something, it's just because it's not the right thing, right? Mm -hmm. Or if you temporarily like deny it, then that just means that right at this moment, 48 hours before I leave from Thailand, it's not the right time, right? Mm -hmm. And so if I can keep myself, and this is hard, <laughs> If I can keep myself in one of those three answers, then I know by the end of tonight, I'll have whatever come to life. I mean, that's just what I have to do, right? I don't know the answer. And so I guess that's what I would I would tell your viewers is like, the higher you go, the bigger risks you take, the challenges don't go away, but you got to decide how you want to show up. I want to take this next step. I want to expand my bakery, which means I'll have to double my team. So instead of 13 employees, I'll probably need somewhere around 20. Guess what? My wages change if I have more than 20 employees in California. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of things change. And so it's just one of those things where you got to make an educated decision, an educated couple of guesses put all your ducks in a row and then leave a little bit of room for magic, grace, the Lord, whatever you believe in. And we're not ever excluded from that. Mm. Totally. totally. Oh, I absolutely, oh, love, absolutely love it. No, because one, one, um, um, one of my favorite mantras is that you're exactly where you need to be and that everything is unfolding perfectly. And when you yeah. have two beliefs that kind of control everything that goes on around you, you realize there are no wrong turns, there are no failures, there are no um, missed boats. Mm -hmm. You're exactly where you need to be. So I can't wait to see how this all unfolds for you. And maybe just going to Thailand and chilling out for two weeks is exactly what you need just to just... Right. And there's mm. so much pressure though. Like before you leave, we have to do this and mm. we're going to start construction. And I'm like, you know what? I kind of just want to like say time out, freeze the time. I don't want to do this right now because it just doesn't, it feels too rushed, mm -hmm. but it's also, I understand there's construction deadlines and there's things that have to happen. And so what if I don't move and do my part, then I can miss out on this great opportunity. And so mm -hmm. that's, I think the missing step that, that your viewers need to understand. That doesn't mean leave it all open to the universe, right? You just like kind of sit back and watch things unfold. That mm -hmm. doesn't work. You got to show up and do your part and participate take action you've got to take action and um yeah and that's exactly what i teach nick on my on my vision board workshops that in you know for a long time i think people thought well you know I, anyone could do a vision board just cut out pictures stick them on yeah anyone can do that but it's actually what you do to prepare to get clear what is part of your big vision and then there's also the action steps afterwards you know what am i going to do afterwards now to make sure i stay in alignment every day with that vision um to make these things happen and you know and i love what you shared about um you know about taking risks because I, again I, I think fortune really does favor the brave um you can sit back and worry about things going wrong and be you know stuck in your comfort zone and you know and never nothing ever happens and you know which when you get to the end of your, your life i don't it's such a tragedy to think about, God, I wish I'd, what if I'd taken that opportunity? What if I'd just been brave enough to take that step? What if I just applied to go on that show and make cakes, you know? Yeah. Come on, everyone. Let's just be a bit braver. And, yeah, life does throw curveballs at us and things go wrong. However, they're all just lessons. You can't yeah. grow without these lessons. Yeah. And is and you got it every day. You got to grow. So these lessons, these failures, 
they're just lessons and opportunities for growth so and so it's just um perfect um yeah i just want to just thank you so much for coming on i didn't realize what time constraints you were under when i invited you oh. to be on the show you know, that's the thing. It's going to happen regardless of whether I spend 30 minutes on here with you or not. I mean, I got to just kind of, so we'll see. I don't know. I literally don't know what's going to happen before I get on between now and the time I get on the plane. I don't know. I could have signed a crazy lease and I could have said, you know, it's not the right time. Yeah, well, I can't wait to hear. Keep me posted. So oh, well. I'm going to I'm going to post up the links to um, your um it's not a it's, it's not a really a course, is it? Is it actually an eight week um, academy? How do how do you describe yeah, it? It is a course. Um, it's an eight week. It's kind of an eight week mentorship program. You know, mm -hmm. there's a community of graduates. I call them the alumni, and they mm -hmm. like to chime in and help the new students. And so we just closed our cart and started a whole new session on Monday. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, I've got new students that are eager and ready to show up. And it's funny because every time you have new students, I'm sure you have this too. You go, all right, who's really going to make this happen? You know, mm -hmm. you get to kind of stand back and you can tell just because of what, like how you've showed up in your business, you can tell like who's going to put in the work, who's going to make it happen, who's mm -hmm. going to be really thriving at the end of this. And you want all of them to be really successful, but it is about how you throw yourself out of bed every day and the actions that you choose to make. And so, mm -hmm. so I hope that they get out of bed and do the stuff I tell them to do. I'm sure that I, I think I'd be scared to not do what you told me to do. <laughs> yeah, I hear that I'm a little intimidating sometimes, so I don't know why, but you know, I definitely will tell you to get your shit together though, if that's what's required. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. It's brilliant. Now, and uh, everyone, I would also highly encourage you to go and check out Janelle's Instagram account because I just, I love it because the cakes are so beautiful. It just makes me hungry. And I don't know if it's a good or bad thing that I can't actually physically get to your store, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm back in California in August. I'm going to visit your store. I'll I'm bring you visit. some. I'll bring you some. And, <laughs> you know, if you want to look at the cakes, you can go to follow us, The Cake Mamas on Instagram. And, and if one you want, M is in it, M A M A S. Yep. And if you want to follow my Thailand shenanigans, because there's always something crazy with my family, um, I will tell you that after the show that Eddie and I did that we can't talk about right now, they were very interested in pursuing some sort of show with just Eddie and I. And so that's pretty funny. Um, mm. But that's kind of in the works too. And so we'll be. Uh, documenting our Thailand trip because we're ridiculous as a family and I'm sure that it will be entertaining so if you're interested in following that it's Janelle Copeland and you are a very Instagrammable family you are <laughs> I, I, I would, I, you're gorgeous all of you your girls you're just all amazing um so yeah I can't wait to follow your Thailand adventures I was there at New Year and an amazing time so I will be Offline, I'll give you my tips and tips. Yes, thank tips. you. Okay. Well, so thank, thank you, you for so having me. Thank you so much for being on. You've been an amazing guest. And I hope that's kind of inspired some people watching today just to kind of like, okay, let's just do something wild and crazy. Who knows where it could lead? I actually see the Copelands, the reality TV show. I just see it now. Who knows? Let's hope. Yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. What if I signed the lease and then that came? Wouldn't be that big of a deal, right? Who knows? I'm sure I if know. I had a show, it, that'd be great. It, it's all unfolding perfectly for, yes. for you, Janelle. Oh, I perfect. Love <laughs> I love you too. Thank you so much, everyone. And I'll see you next week. Bye now. All right, let's just.